All right, in this episode, we talk about an explosive stride and how to avoid jumping out or reaching to home plate. All right, Brent Porcio, Jared Vandehoff, Stephen Godani, here at the At Top Velocity hashtag Pitch and Tips show, where you go to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and you put At Top Velocity hashtag Pitch and Tips, and ask your question. Anything about pitching, anything we do here at Top Velocity, we're going to answer it on the show. And also share the videos, guys, because we're trying to keep this going. So we'd like to get more guys uh, uh, sharing it, so others can see and benefit and learn from what we're doing here, and ask some great questions. So what's our question for today? El Caballete asks. How do I avoid reaching out or jumping towards home plate if I want an explosive stride? That's actually a really good question. I think guys that come into 3X, uh, 3X pitching um, under, start to learn quickly about triple extension, and then they get lost in this jumping, flying stride, uh, kind of looking like uh, Jordan Walden or uh, Caps with the Marlins. Yeah, it, so point is, is, yes, it is something that's very challenging. And in, as you learn, once you gain the power to be able to actually drive, which most guys don't have enough power to actually drive off their back leg, um, and, and if you don't have the technique and the timing down, then you're jumping and you're flying. But to tell you the truth, a lot of the jumping too is guys wanting to throw their lift legs out, guys wanting to open up early or use the lift leg to generate the momentum. Really the hips are generating the momentum, the back leg is accelerating and generating the forces behind the hips. And to really learn that and not feel like you're jumping out is you need to learn that the timing of it has to happen just before you land. So of course, in the process, I have to learn first how to load my leg, which is get it into a linear position and get flexion in it. And we take the hips forward and down at the same rate as we do that, we fall forward and down. And then we have to implement triple extension, which is the extension of the ankle, knee, and hip flexor just before we land. So if you learn to time it the last millisecond before we land, then it doesn't feel like we're jumping or flying down the mound. And also, if you don't try to use your lift leg to generate the momentum, which typically ruins everything, and I say guys that can't calm down your lift legs, you just put an ankle weight on it, you weight it down, and then you start to learn that back leg. Um, so if you're doing either one, if you're, if you're timing it too early, or if you're trying to over or use your lift leg to generate your momentum, you're gonna feel like you're jumping down the mound. And you really need to learn the explosiveness of it, how to load it, and how to time it just before front foot strike to really get the benefits of it. But here's someone, Jared, you came to camp when? Um, the August camp. Okay, so he came to the August camp, and now he's come down here to train with us. Um, but everyone goes to this. So what's been your lesson coming from the camp, or what have you been working on from the camp in your lower half uh, that kind of relates to, to this? Well, in the beginning, I did have a problem with my front leg jumping. I was jumping on some of the drills, and once I got coming here and doing the drills more and more, you can feel the difference between a jump and a drive, and especially with the plate drills that he has. You can tell when the plate pushes back, and you can hear the sound, and otherwise, if you're jumping, you won't hear anything. And that was just what helped me, those drills, just feeling that jump, and even, like you said, putting the weight on sometimes, that helps, and you can definitely feel the difference because you can't move your front leg with the weight there. Yeah, and he's talking about the plates of the King of the Hill plates, a great training tool, and it fits very well into my programs. You can also get the plates at topvelocity.net, and I have a cool program that goes with those plates uh, when, you, when you purchase the plate. Um, so yeah, that was very beneficial. So I, what do you feel, too, is uh, it really helped you in getting the power? Do you feel like, is it just been the drills you're doing? Is it been the lifting, or has it been a combination of both? It's definitely a combination of both, because all the lifting, is explosion lifts, and it really helps you with changing that to pitching into the plate. Right, so do you feel like in you being one and a guy who wants to jump or a guy who maybe wants to fly open early, do you feel like if you just had more power through the lifting that you would want to actually, or you'd actually be able to eat more easily time it better? Definitely, through the stride? more okay. easily time it and you would know what the difference is between jumping and power. Right, so and I think that's important to understand that you're actually going to feel less or, or more organized or more effective in building that explosive stride if you really have the athleticism to do it. If you've got the lower half strength, power, mobility, 
um, to do it, that's really, really going to be the key. Those guys that don't have that, they typically get lost in drills. And what I mean by lost in drills, it's like they're 30 reps in and they're still frustrated, right? So I, that's the, I think it's the worst thing you can do is let yourself get lost, frustrated in a drill because it's telling you that something's wrong, meaning like you're, there's, there's something missing in you that's causing you uh, a struggle through the drill and that more than likely isn't going to be fixed in the drill. That's why we have a fusion of things uh, to really help influence and enhance of what we're doing to become that high velocity pitcher. So don't be those guys out that are, that are just wanting to do, just find all the drills to do to make this work. You need to understand that there's a whole uh, comprehensive approach to what we're trying to do and training the athlete, training uh, the motor control uh, and training the skill. I mean, what do you feel like has been the benefit of coming into this program as opposed to you just doing this on your own like you were doing before it? It's definitely hard to do it on your own because you don't know what you're doing wrong when you're doing it wrong. Like you can videotape and see then, but it's real hard to feel because a lot of people, you can't feel everything or you feel something different than what's actually going on. So with being here, he can help you and try to change your mindset of what you think you're doing than what you should be doing. Cool. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I think just a lot of guys come in and uh, um, a lot of guys have that problem where they kick their front leg out and it's not really an explosive stride. And I think it all pretty much just comes down to, like they're saying, like you're probably just not athletic enough to be doing it. Um, when you look at the board of like our, our, our top V leaderboards, all the guys that are uh, killing it in the weight room, they're at the top of our list. They all tend to be the guys that are throwing uh, uh, in the 90s, high 90s. They're all uh, moving a lot of weight. Uh, they usually weigh uh, a little bit more. And then um, just their athletic uh, assessment tests are like through the roof. All of them are usually over 30 inch vertical jumps. They're over around 10 foot broad jumps. They're all running sub one fives or, or a one five sub or, or one five or a sub one five uh, 10 yard dash, just stuff like that. So if you're not in that category, um, you probably don't have the power to be doing it. But then I've also seen guys like um, in camp, uh, one, of, one, of my, one of the guys that was here, Brad Lander, shout out to Brad, he, I liked him. Uh, he, I thought he had really good explosion and he was just jumping. Like he wasn't timing it to where, it, like Brent's saying, into front foot strike. So it's not gonna sync up. He wasn't gonna, he wasn't gonna sink any of that power from the lower half. So he would explode and use all of his power and his front leg wouldn't even be on the ground. So then by the time it landed, it's still, mainly just going to be upper body once once you do yeah, that because so. everything was flying open with him so he's his next step and typically it comes in that way you you, you learn the, the the to get the power in the lower half and then you got to learn how to convert it unless you're a guy who came in with a good sense and a good um, movement of hip to shoulder separation then you pick up the power in your lower half and then it's already converting and what happens is your ball speed goes up quickly where your guy kind of like like brad that comes into it that um, didn't really have great hip shoulder separation, was limited in trunk rotation and some hip uh, mobility, but picked up a lot of power in the program and didn't see his ball speed go up because he wasn't converting it. And it was early, it was jumping, it was a little early. So it's like, it's good to see he's gaining the power and he's making that progression, but the next steps are timing the lower half better and making sure the separation is there. Separation it has to be a part of an explosive stride because if not, it's of no use. You'll actually see the stride pick up power and you won't see ball speed pick up. And that's when we get really frustrated. It's because you're, you're not converting it with hip or shoulder separation. Yeah. So that's a great question. You got a, go, got a question, go to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at Top Velocity, hashtag, hashtag pitching tips. Ask your question and we're gonna answer on the show. And if you guys out there working hard and want to uh, get on our 3X programs, our velocity programs, and you wanna reach your velocity goals, uh, go check them out at topvelocity.net. We got our beginner's guide, our extreme which is our uh, full years of, of, of velocity training. It goes three levels off season, preseason, in season. And then um, if, if you wanna come down, we highly recommend you come down to a camp like Jared did, work with us or stay here and train like Jared did. And uh, that would be awesome, we're, we're here to help. Uh, thanks for asking your questions and we'll see you on the next episode. So. Boys.